I was on Instagram, but I was not like I when when Instagram came out, I was I had just started college. I had no idea what I was going to do. Not having a following is holding me back from doing that. But I also don't think that having a following is holding me back. Be I don't think not having a following is holding me back. My name is Larry G. I am a photographer based in Gonzales, Louisiana. All right. So we're going to pray that I stay in focus. Let's monitor this. Um, we're going to pray that I stay in focus. And we're also going to pray <clears throat> that everything records that everything records the way that I have set it up to. And just so you guys can see the new setup, this is what I'm rocking. So I will include this footage into the video. <clears throat> but as you guys can see, I have my camera set up here. I'm using window light, um, my computer, the blue snowball. And then you can see behind me um, hopefully you can see behind me. Actually, I can check with this. Yeah, you guys can see behind me. Turn that off. Um, if you're viewing this on YouTube, you can see behind me uh, whoop, this light and some artwork in the back. But that's beside the point. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into the topic for today. And that is the social media trap. So I'm going to do my best to continue looking at the camera. Um, I'm also kind of monitoring this video because it's plugged into my computer so I can kind of monitor it because this does not have a flip screen. And let's get into it. So the topic for today is the social media trap. I also have my notes here just so you guys know what I'm talking about. The social media trap. And basically what that is, is you get sucked into playing the game of social media. So <clears throat> as a creative person, sometimes it's hard to create because you get trapped into the idea of likes and follows and um, just like vanity metrics, basically. And that does not, excuse me, constitute good work. So one of the hardest things for a lot of new creators and just creators in general to wrap their brain around is the fact that social media attention is not the same as actual professional attention. So that means just because you have 100 followers on Instagram, 100 is kind of a low number, but still, let's just use that example. Just because you have 100 followers on Instagram doesn't mean that your work isn't good. And just because someone has a million followers on Instagram means that their work is good. See what I'm talking about? <clears throat> So sometimes I get caught in, I get caught up in this social media trap is what I like to call it, where the work that I put out obviously is better than work that I've put out before, but it's underperforming or it's not performing the way I want it to, or it's not performing as well as someone else's work. And I just want to talk about that for a minute. Um, being a smaller creator um, following wise, it's really easy to look at the larger people and stop Siri. It's really easy to look at the larger people and see, oh, I can create work like that, or I'm putting out stuff like that, or I'm putting out stuff that's just as good. Why aren't, why aren't I growing? And the truth of the matter is either you showed up late to the game or you're not playing the game the way it wants you to play. And that comes into like that in re in what I'm trying to say is like uh, that part comes into play when you talk about things like the algorithm. So, yes, the dreaded Instagram, YouTube, whatever you want to call it, algorithm. Um, you have to play the game in order to see the results that others are seeing. Others are seeing the results because they either got in really early and they milked the system before they had an algorithm or they learned how to milk the algorithm and work it and pimp it to see the results that they want to see. And so, or, or the third option, they hire someone else to do it for them. That is very much a thing where people will hire someone to run their accounts to grow them. Um, I know because I did it. 
I didn't grow, you know, million dollar Instagram, not million dollar, million follower Instagram accounts, but I have run social media accounts for other people. Um, So I know what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, people grow other people's Instagram accounts. So this focus thing is going to kill me. I'm sorry, people who are just listening. On to the next topic. I completely forgot what I was saying, but I'm just going to move on anyway. So why I think I'm not a large creator. Um, I don't want to put myself on some kind of pedestal, but I have gotten validation from my work that I should have more followers, that my work is good. It's good enough. And I think one of the reasons that I am not a large creator is because I don't play the game. Um, I spent some time talking to my wife about this and I do social media and marketing and stuff all day for my day job. It's not exactly what I want to do when I get off work. Also, the peak times for me to be even doing that is during my day job. And, you know, sometimes I, uh, interact on social media when I'm supposed to be at work, like we all do. But it's a completely different thing to run a business while you're supposed to be working. And I'm not trying to do that. So and I don't like I really don't want to schedule things out like that. Some things I schedule, but social media, I'm really trying to be intentional with it. And I want to be in the moment and give the algorithm something to feed off of. So if I'm posting on social media, I'm probably liking and commenting for like at least 10 minutes, 10, five to 10 minutes before, and then five to 10 minutes after. Um, and that's part of playing the game. So I think I'm not a larger creator because, uh, one, I didn't really find photography until Instagram was super saturated Two, um, I was on Instagram, but I was not like I, when, when Instagram came out, I was, I had just started college. I had no idea what I was going to do. And social media was kind of not on my mind as far as like business stuff. So I kind of came into the game a little late. And then when I found out that it was actually a game, I didn't want to play until I knew that I needed money or I knew that I wanted to make money from it. And once something is established, you have to work two or three times as hard to see the results. And I'm, I just wasn't in it. So I believe those are contributing factors as to why I'm not a larger creator. But those are just my thoughts. Also, my work could just suck. <clears throat> I, could ple- I could completely be in my head about this and have a big head and think that, you know, my work deserves to be seen by more people or I could just suck. So either way, you guys will prove me wrong or not. Um, the next topic on this list, and yes, I'm just going to go by topics. These videos will get better. I promise. Um, the benefits of not having a large following. So I watched a video earlier today by, I think his name was Danny Javits. I really don't remember his name. I'm so sorry. Um, but I watched this video earlier and he was talking about how, He's so thankful that he didn't have an audience while he was learning or growing. And other larger creators say the same thing. <clears throat> so when you first start out or you're growing, it's best to not have a lot of eyes on you so you can make a bunch of mistakes and mess up and fail. And it only be like one or two people that call you out on it. Whereas, you know, let's just name drop a little bit. If Peter McKinnon messes up on something, he's got like, over a million subscribers. So, you know, he's got like a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand comments telling him that he messed up or something stupid or it's wrong or whatever. And the dislikes and the negativity just come with growing and popularity and fame or whatever. But if you have all that when you're first starting, you might not keep going. You know, you see all that negativity and you just be like, man, F everybody. I don't want to do this anymore, especially if y'all going to treat me like this. So I think I think that's one of the major benefits of not having a large following right now is because 
I'm completely inconsistent. Hopefully this year will fix that. I'm really sorry for all these sounds. I probably shouldn't even be recording this video right now. I've been sneezing all day. Um, it's not COVID. I have pets and their hair is everywhere. Uh, like I said, that's I think that's some of the benefits of not having such a large following right now. And do I think a following is holding me back? Yes and no. I think a following is holding me back because I'm in a point in my career where I want to grow and I want to leverage uh, my platform and my brand and all that stuff. And not having a following is holding me back from doing that. But I also don't think that having a following is holding me back. Be I don't think not having a following is holding me back because I can still put out whatever I want and not entirely care. And I'll explain that a little bit. So <clears throat> the people that follow me know that sometimes I ask my followers for uh, results or I ask my followers questions and like I make this. Sometimes I make decisions based on what my followers say. and. You know, if if my following was larger, I wouldn't know the people who are interacting with me. Like most of the people that are interacting with me, I know them personally. I could probably text them or call them. Um, and if my following was larger, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I like the personability, personal, personable ability. I like being able to talk to the people who I'm interacting with on a personal level. So that's one of the reasons I don't think it's holding me back. The other reason is I'm free to create whatever in whatever lane I want and still have people, enough people um, support it to where if it's good, I can keep going. If it's not, I can stop. Whereas if my following was larger, if I start something, I would kind of want to go through with it because I don't want to let people down. <clears throat> Let's see. This is still recording. I have no idea how long it's been recording. That's one of the downfalls of this. Anyway. Oh, wait, I can check the audio. I'm probably just going to leave all this in here, too. All right, 12 minutes. That's not bad. So I think the last question I had on this list for today is what I'm doing about it. So basically what I'm doing about it is I want to grow. My growth plan is to post uh, more consistently on Instagram and Facebook. I've also started posting on 500 PX and I plan to start posting on Behance once a week. Um, I've also been posting on LinkedIn every now and then sporadically. So I'm posting everywhere. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is I am updating my website more regularly. I will have a weekly journal post, which is just like photos that I take throughout the week or one day a week, I'll go out and take photos and those will get dumped there. So it's it should be consistent. They're not always all going to be bangers. Um, they're probably not all always going to be good, but it'll be something consistent and it'll force me to get out and pick up my camera uh, for more than just client shoots. The other aspect of it is this YouTube channel and these YouTube videos going forward. Um, I tried to film this last night. I will probably not show that footage. It was really bad, but I tried to talk about Volandis and how he is one of my favorite YouTubers, photographer YouTubers right now, because it's not all just gear reviews, gear reviews, gear reviews, or software reviews, or, you know, this tech, this in tech, because I love those videos, don't get me wrong, but I also like the sustenance of photographers talking about photography or photographers talking about being a photographer, because that's real life. <laughs> You know, everybody doesn't have the connections and the money to go out and buy the newest gear or the latest gear or try the newest software or pay this monthly fee for this or be gifted that through a brand deal. So having photographers talk about actual photography um, is probably one of my favorite things. So Volandis 
and the art of photography are two of my favorite channels because it's not just gear. It's actual photography. There are others in that list, but Valandis is the top for me right now. So that is the style of content. I say all that to say that is the style of content that I want to make. I don't want to just talk about gear. Um, I want to talk about photography and being a photographer. So that is the content plan moving forward. Uh, welcome to 2020. I didn't say, wow, welcome to 2020. Welcome to 2021. Um, starting the year off wacky already. So welcome to the new year. Um, I hope you guys stick around. These will get better. This was not as much of a dumpster fire as it was last night. I hope you stick around. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, leave a comment down below. Let me know what other photography topics you would like me to talk about. I have a list, but I would always enjoy uh, talking about what you guys want to hear about. So thank you guys for watching slash listening. Um, I hope you have a new, hope you have a good new year. I cannot talk and I'm going to leave all this in so you guys can know it's raw. Um, I hope you guys have a new year. Good. Wow. I hope you guys have a good new year. I hope you accomplish everything on your lists, on your resolutions, on your goals lists. I hope you guys make the best decisions that you can and you be the best you. My name is Larry G. I am a photographer based in Gonzales, Louisiana. And that is all I got. If you like this video, please, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Um, hit the subscribe button. Uh, ring the bell for notifications. That's all I got. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.